Now let's cover Newton's third law. And I'm going to do it just like last time. I'm going to give you the street version and then we'll talk about it. So if you ask someone on the street, Newton's third law, they will say for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, quote, period. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So really what this is telling us is, let me not restate it, but let's describe it a little bit, is that forces are interactions between two bodies. All forces, there's always actually, they come in pairs. All the forces that we talk about are actually interactions between two bodies. And each feels the same F, not quite. The direction will be different but the magnitude will be the same. So I'll put that. They each feel the same amount of force. They usually are in opposite directions uh, for an action-reaction pair. They're always in opposite directions. Um, so now, these are useful when you're solving a real complicated problem. They kind of help you keep up with all the different forces in the problem. You remember that each one, there has to be an action-reaction pair. If you look like maybe you're missing a force, maybe you can use Newton's third law to find it. But here is some advice <coughs> to find the two forces. So to find action, reaction pairs, and that's kind of the phrase we use for the forces, the pair of forces, um, do not draw a free body diagram. The whole point of a free body diagram is to consider a single body and add up all the different forces on the single body. That's pretty much the opposite of action-reaction pairs. The whole point of an action-reaction pairs is it's a single kind of force acting on two bodies. It's not all the forces on one body, it's one interaction force on two. So the last thing you want to do is draw a free body diagram. Also, do not calculate the sum of the forces on anything. Again, that's what you want to do. That's what we've been doing a lot of to solve problems. Oh, the sum of the forces equals ma. We better add up all the forces on this one body. That is not what you do when you're finding an action-reaction pair. You have to consider pairs of bodies. So let's do an example, or let's sort of come up with the action-reaction pairs for a simple case, and that is something just resting. So here I have Al, and Al is resting on the table and not moving. And I'm using Al because Hal is taking personal day. It's a long story. So here's Al sitting here, not moving. Let's draw that situation. And to make sure we capture all the pairs, we're going to draw the whole thing. Here is the Earth, not to scale. And here is the table that Al is sitting on, and here is Al, the aluminum ball, all right? So we've considered this setup before. We say, why is Al not moving? It's because he has mg pulling him down, but the table is giving you a normal force in, pushing him up, and the sum of those forces is zero. But that is not how we find an action-reaction pair. So let's see, so to find an action-reaction pair, let's first think about mg. Right? We could say um, mg, the force mg uh, on Hal, I'm sorry, it's Al, sorry, on Al, and that's down. All right. So what is the action-reaction pair for that force? Well, it's actually that 
Al pulls up on the Earth. Just like Al feels a gravitational attraction to the Earth, the Earth feels a gravitational attraction to Al. Okay? And guess what its magnitude is? Mg. Mg on the Earth. And which way? It's up. So the Earth is feeling a force to accelerate towards Al. It's the same size of the force, but the acceleration is pretty small. If you take that force, a few newtons, and divide it by the mass of the Earth, it's not moving very fast. But the force is there. So that is the react action reaction pair. Two forces, equal magnitudes, opposite directions, and there's two bodies. The two bodies are the Earth and Al. Let's do another one, action reaction. Uh, let's see. The other force we're used to thinking about is big N, right? Is, is the normal force. So we have N, the normal force, on Al, and it is up direction. It's being applied by the table. Right? The table is applying N to Al. Well, that identifies the pair. It must then be that Al is pushing down on the table. So there must also be N, the same thing, on the table down. Okay. It's not just its mg. mg is the force on L, not on the table. N is the force on the table. That's the force of Al pushing down on the table. Since Al's not moving, the math works out that it happens to be ng, or I'm sorry, mg in magnitude equals the normal force. They are the same. So Al does push down on the table with a force that's equivalent to mg but it's really a contact force, a normal force that it's pushing down. So the other action-reaction pair is between Al and the table. And in fact, if you want to find them all, you just start grabbing all the bodies in the problem in pairs. Right? The only one left is the table and the Earth. And you could go through and get their gravitational, and you can work out uh, their contact forces as well. It all works out. So Action-reaction doesn't lead to as many long, complicated problems as free body diagrams and kinematics, but it is very useful to identify forces. So we'll be doing a few practice problems.